There is a calming connection between people in parks like Montgomery Bell. We go there to reflect, to relax, to renew and restore. People who haven't been here before will find themselves a wonderful little wild spot. It's a place you can come, get away from the telephones, get away from the TVs, and just use that time to relax in an outdoor setting. You can mountain bike, you can play golf, you can just have a simple hike in the woods. There's so many things that you can do here to try and keep yourself a little healthier, physically, but also spiritually. But Montgomery Bell State Park hasn't always been such a soothing shelter for the soul. At one time, this land was eroded, exhausted, and considered by some to be worthless wasteland. We are standing here within the ore pits where the iron industry flourished here at Montgomery Bell State Park. The discovery of iron ore in the early 1800s started the process that would all but devastate the landscape. Needed to make essential tools for frontier life, iron was extracted from the rocks by intense fire and heat generated in huge limestone furnaces fueled by trees. It was cut over and butchered pretty badly. The park's namesake, Montgomery Bell, was one of the area's most successful iron barons during the heyday of the industry. But the bustling iron business didn't last forever. When it moved to the northeast, what was left behind was a desolate landscape stripped of trees. Almost 70 years would pass before land would be healed, ironically, by a depression. When we had the terrible depression in the 1920s and 30s, uh, President Franklin Roosevelt created a number of uh, federal agencies who worked to restore and to protect and preserve our resources. The National Park Service was charged with building recreation demonstration areas, in other words, parks, uh, within lots of different areas of the country. In Dixon County, the government bought close to 5,000 acres around the old furnace and ore pits, then began to transform it with a workforce that would change the landscape, change lives, and change the country. The Civilian Conservation Corps was a program for young men. They did uh, a lot of the non-skilled labor, but also there was a program called the Works Progress Administration that uh, brought in older uh, people that had skill sets that were useful in building buildings or uh, doing erosion control or whatever. Among the members of the Civilian Conservation Corps at what was then called the Montgomery Bell Recreational Demonstration Area was Warren Medley. I got here the last two or three years of the existence of the Civilian Conservation Corps. Couldn't have happened at a better time. I started helping building roads, setting out trees, doing everything. Another group of CCC workers at Montgomery Bell was Company 4497, an all-African-American group. Though segregated from their white counterparts, these enrollees were equal in their drive, efforts, and goals. They did a wonderful job, and the skill was quite evident when you look at the facilities that they have left us. To, to this day, you can see the skill and, and pride that they took in their work. The CCC did the backbreaking work of transforming wasted land into a pristine park. This monument stands in honor of all the young men who worked on the Montgomery Bell Recreational Area. The park itself is a living memorial to their commitment and sacrifice. It's a lasting legacy, you might say, of the Civilian Conservation Corps that they built something that will carry on in the future providing the benefits that it has in the past. Today, those benefits can be found winding through woods, moving past shadows of history that changed a country and transformed lives, circling across land and beside water where wildlife thrives and makes its home. Everybody needs places to go and play and to rest and to be inspired by. And Montgomery Bell, with its 4,000 acres of beautiful hardwood forest and clear streams, is one of the best places in the state of Tennessee to receive those benefits. 
trails are made for weary men that we might find our souls again. And little leaves are hung on trees. They're just the whisper of old memories. While trails with cedar shadows black are placed there just to lead us back past all the pitfalls of success, back to boyhoods and girlhoods, faith and happiness. And that's what parks like these are all about.